Well, I'm here with Don Mickleborough, one of the, the great legends of Australian ocean racing and certainly of the CYC. Well, Don, you're a long-time member of this club. What are your early, some early memories of this, this establishment? Gee, Before yeah. you were banned, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I bought Southerly in 1958, and I joined the club after I bought Southerly. And it was just a harbour racing boat, and I converted it to uh, ocean racing. And um, so I joined the club as being the, uh, the ultimate club. Oh, I might, might tell you, I did sail up from Hobart in about 1952, in a boat to, to do the Hobart race, but we didn't get here in time to start. And I have never got such a shock in my life as to see the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, what it looked like. <laughs> it was a dilapidated old boat shed <laughs> and the dirtiest shower I've ever seen in my life. And I thought, my God, what am I coming to here? The CYC. But anyway, then by the time I joined 58, I'd moved to Sydney to live from Launceston, and uh, 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 it's a remarkable club then, yes. by then. So some wonderful <laughs> memories, but uh, yeah. if you talk about 58, you bought Southerly and you got third that year in the Hobart race? No, no, that... no, that we had to retire because of we opened up a plank. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Tell us about that, and having to survive off Montague Island. Uh, yeah, well, off Montague actually, and uh, uh, going very well on the race too. I think we were leading on handicap probably, and um, we sp it was pretty hard based of weather. And um, she opened, opened up a plank along the garbage, and uh, uh, um, water was coming out at a pretty rapid rate. And um, and uh, we had a few characters on board: Doug Linton, Jules Epstein. Uh, Anyway, uh, uh, we've, uh, the water was up over the bunks and uh, I was on the radio calling May Day and uh, uh, we were about 16 miles offshore. And uh, anyway, uh, I couldn't get any reply to the May Day call, but I heard that later on the, that uh, I think it was George Barton was in charge of the radio relay ship and he's, he's got to have a bit of a sleep and and put some one else in charge and anyway eventually they woke him up and asked him if there was a boat in this race called Mayday. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that threw the a bit of a spanner in the works but anyway we uh, eventually the water be, it was over the motor and everything but I eventually got we throwing, throwing a bucket full out and uh, I got the motor running it's enough to keep a bilge pump, mechanical bilge pump going and uh, so we were able to get, we'd get onto the beach of Bermagui. So uh, we saved the day. But didn't you use two towels as well to try oh, and Oh, yeah, well, the, the boy Mister was with us. And, yeah. and the last thing he went, we, we did before we took off from Messenger's boat, Shadow Double Bay, was he grabbed a corky iron out of, the, out of his locker there. Oh, he said, we'll take this just in case. Anyway, we, we corked it with a tea towel from inside the boat. You could see daylight through the, the gap in the planks. And uh, anyway, the reason being that the mast was stepped on a keel in those days. Since then we put a mast step about eight, eight or ten foot long and uh, it's eight inches by eight inches so, solid uh, uh, spotted gum. So it's a very heavy mast step and it's never happened again. And we, we put a few uh, strengthening bulkheads in and so on. Well, suddenly, I mean, a, a boat that was um, yeah, synonymous with you and the CYC and the Hobart race, some wonderful memories. You got a third one year in the Hobart race. Two and years we got third. Two, two years, yeah. Overall. And a lot of characters sailed on that boat, and yeah. a lot of stories were told. <laughs> tell, tell us some of the characters. I mean, you, you tell the Rubber Kellaway story of the Montague race. <laughs> tell, tell, tell the Rubber story. I've got to tell you about Dougie Linturn first. Oh, well, tell us about Dougie Linturn. <laughs> and what was his, and what, what, how did you nickname Linturn? Dougie Linturn. Linturn, he said, uh, he said, he used to talk quickly and but stutter a bit as well. He said, uh, my day name's uh, Dougie Linturn, left hand about ten, right hand in ten, out ten, sister and Dougie shit house. <laughs> 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 and uh, 
Uh, so he was uh, progressively known as various, various <laughs> excerpts from that. Right. But uh, anyway, Dougie was. Uh, what we, we were talking about the Montague race. Oh that, yeah, Montague race. So, so I was uh, I was going in the Montague race, and I think it was my father died or something in Tasmania, and I had to go home, and I couldn't go right. So I, Dougie was one of my crew, and Robert Kellaway, I was a very good friend, and he was a very substantial sailor, sailing bloke, so I asked him if he'd skip at the boat to Montague in my, in my place. So he said, oh yeah, I'll go, go down with Dougie on Saturday afternoon and have a bit of a look at her and see what she's like. And uh, Robert turned up and uh, Dougie had the plumbing part and uh, a salt water pump and a fresh water pump and, and, uh, and a hot water, warm, warm salt water pump. That uh, or supply out of the, from the main engine. Anyway, uh, he said, Rob, are you going to have a drink? And Rob said, Yeah, what have you got? He said, Oh, I've got some scotch or some brandy. He said, Oh, I'll have a scotch. So they had the new bottle of scotch, and uh, Dougie poured him the scotch and water. And uh, Rob said, Dougie, you sure that, that, that tastes like salt water? No, Dougie he said, He said, Have a look at this. I've got the pipes disconnected. See, no bloody salt water. And uh, so Robert, uh, so he finished the bottle of scotch during the day. At the end, of, Robert said to me when I, after I returned from Tasmania, he said, "You know," he said, "I was so thirsty on the way home." He said, "I had to stop and have a couple of couple of scooters of beer to get rid of my thirst." He'd been in salt water all day with the scotch, <laughs> with the scotch. <laughs> no, he's drinking brandy. So. Right, right. <laughs> But I mean, you know, you mentioned Dougie Linton and Rubber. I mean, but yeah, yeah the other, you know, there's a heap of characters: earrings, thunder, yeah, raw yeah, meat, yeah, yeah. the lunch. Uh, yeah, the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to be too much for me. Yeah, okay, yeah. But but um, you know, the infamous Rubber, uh, the infamous um, thunder and earrings. Yeah. Oh, we, Jules Epstein saw us too. Jules Epstein. And it must have been a wonderful time of camaraderie yeah. and, and, and games and fun. And, well, that year, that was the year that we uh, opened up and nearly sunk. And uh, at the time, it was pretty rugged going to weather. And uh, uh, Jules was on the tiller. And, uh, and he had wanted to know what all the panic was downstairs, down below. And he, uh, he yelled out, what's going on down there? And, Malcolm McRae was with us, Tasmania, another Tasmanian black, and he said, uh, oh, don't worry about it, Jules. He said, uh, just keep it going. Uh, he said, uh, we're taking a lot of water. He said, we'll probably sink, but don't, just keep it going. He said, keep it going west. <laughs> <laughs> so he became known, known as Westy Abbey. Westy Abbey, that's right. <laughs> But yeah. and, and, and you know, a highly decorated World War Two pilot. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was a pathfinder, mm. navigator mm. Uh, during the war in yeah. bomber command, yeah. and uh, he was a high, uh, DFC and bar. I think he had. Yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. But he was a character. Don, you, you sailed on Eilina with uh, Rupert Murdoch. He must have been a, a young man then. Tell us a bit about him. He was a good guy, Rupert. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people might think no, but. No, he was a real good guy, uh, and uh, we, I put the crew together. Uh, Curly Bryden approached me and said, Curly was Rupert's uh, right hand manager, manager of the Daily Mirror at the time, and he said, uh, can you get a crew together? We're not going too well with that island, so I, I, I got them together, all right. I got raw meat, thunder, earrings, Dougie Linturn, myself, uh, Boy Messenger, um, Jules Epstein, uh, I think all of the Southerly crew. crew. Uh, I just can't remember the other names at the present. It's a pretty handy bunch. Oh. <laughs> well, Romy Leary and Thunder were ex 18 footer men. Like, they were pretty ragged sailing boys, <laughs> but uh, great guys. Don, you've, you've done a lot of miles over many years. What is the, the worst weather you've experienced in, in all that time? I think, I think uh, a 60, 63 Hobart race was probably as bad as anything. 
Well, we were in that bad one of 98, mm. but that wasn't anywhere near as bad as the 63 one. But uh, you on Sudley or I Sudley. Sudley, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, we were 12 hours to travel from from Cape from uh, Tasman Island to Cape Rao, which is 11 miles. Mm -hmm. And it took us 12 hours to cover that ground. Well, I think the wind was recorded 86 knots at Tasman. It was, yeah. 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 And uh, it, there was no wind in the hollows. You'd stand upright in the bottom of the waves, and when you get to the top, you just get knocked flat. And uh, it was, we, we, we were on the wind trying to work up to, to the iron pot. Right. And uh, so we got a real, real hiding in that. Uh, I can remember I was asleep, trying to get some sleep on, down below, off watch, and I uh, felt myself roll up on the side of the boat, you know, and I thought, oh, God, this is not too good, and I hear uh, Doug, Lin uh, Doug Linton and say to Yogi Bear, Phil Musgrave, that is, yeah. say to Yogi Bear, uh, you all right, Yogi? He said, of uh, course I'm all right. Uh, 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 Doug, Doug, Doug. He said, uh, don't worry about it, Yogi. He said, we'll be right if we come out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> but you finished? Uh, you finished the race? We, we yeah. finished the race. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I forgot. No, I don't think we did any good handicap wise. No, we didn't. No. But, but that was the worst? That, that was the worst yeah. I think we'd, I'd better be experienced. Right. We'd, we'd already, we'd elected to sail wide, and it was a mistake. I mean, you, you've got to sail with what you when you've got at the time. And we were about two days getting back into the coast in 60 knots, roughly, uh, on the nose. And, Southwester. Uh, yeah, Southwester. And, and uh, we really copped a hiding for a couple of days. And uh, uh, and anyway, and then we finished it off in Storm Bay. Like a, it was a, it was a, I thought at the time it was the most happy named bay in the world. <laughs> Didn't you cop some bad? You did a Trans Tasman race. Didn't you cop some bad weather at the top of New Zealand or one stage? Yeah, we yeah. were two and a half days in the cyclone we're in South. Yeah, yeah. And um, so you sailed from Hobart to New Zealand. We did the Hobart race, and then we sailed from Hobart to Auckland to race back from Auckland to Sydney. Trans Tasman race, it was. Yeah, yeah. Trans Tasman, yeah. back in '61, mm. and uh, we uh, we did we got a, a hell of a hiding. In, we had two and a half days in the cyclone. And going to New Zealand, and we're off at North Cape, and Halverson's were there in Norla, and they were anchored at Spirits Bay, off the top of the North Cape, and uh, we were talking to on the radio every half an hour to see if we'd survive. <laughs> you know, they were going to come and get us, <laughs> but I don't think they could have got us. And uh, but we we loaded up with beer in Hobart because we didn't like New Zealand beer, and we had. Uh, Ten dozen uh, 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 bottles of beer and ten dozen cans, <laughs> and uh, and anyway, she fell off a couple of waves and dropped about twenty foot, and the whole boat in mid air, and uh, she fell on the port side, and she pushed a plank out on the starboard side, just the shock wave going through the boat. The plank had pushed out for about six or eight feet, about a quarter of an inch, but moved it right out from the. Fastings. Anyway, uh, uh, she, when she fell off one of these waves, but we also broke half a dozen bottles of beer. That'd be more serious than the that, plank. That, that. It was. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the bottles of beer we, we had, uh, they were in store, packed in store in those days, and uh, big bottles. Anyway, uh, we reckon that Dougie Linton got glass in his tongue. <laughs> and, and, uh, but, uh, uh, we did. We uh, we break uh, oh, a lot of beer. I've forgotten how many, <laughs> right. and it wasn't too pleasant. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, we survived, yeah. and uh, we got to Hobart uh, to uh, Auckland. We had to do a bit of work on the boat, and fix the plank up, and and so on. And then after that, I splined the boat. When I got back to Tasmania to Australia, I splined it and glued it and splined it and mm. refastened and you know no she's just no, no. she's been a 
fantastic yeah. band ever since. Yeah. Well, I owned it for 53 years, I just sold yeah. it. <laughs> but she's still going well. Yeah. And in later, later years, you sailed another character, Jack Rookland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was a sailing master yeah. on, his, on the, first of all, on Apollo, and then on uh, uh, Ballyhoo, you know, the new one he built. And uh, the aluminium one. And he was a character, Jack, in more ways than one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Words fail me. <laughs> yeah. And I think it'd be fair to say over the years here at the CYC that you've probably, um, to put it nicely, run foul of the officialdom in, in some instances that probably. Uh, <laughs> over the years, uh, I, was, I was known as a rat bag, I think. A rat bag. <laughs> well, a nice rat bag, anyway. Yeah. Uh, there's a there's a wonderful story that uh, that I think at one stage that you had to front the board about uh, a misdemeanour in the in the dining room here at the CYC in probably the mid 70s. Would you would you just like to relate that story? I mean, it's, it's a very innocent <laughs> been, story. And no, one, no one died and no, there was no been, harm. There's been a couple of stories. <laughs> but I think well, I, I think I know the one you yes, referred to. Yes. Uh, it was. Well, a can I set the scene? And uh, well, it was a dance night, correct. a dinner dance on yes. Friday night. And uh, anyway, we we all the South Lake Club always appeared at, as a table. <laughs> and anyway, um, uh, <laughs> the report came through apparently to the CYC that Don Nickelbar was seen dancing on the floor with uh, uh, a lady's hat and a handbag, and uh, and then. Later, singing, singing the good ship lollipop. I was singing the good ship lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, so I, I had to front up before the board to see what they should do. Should they expel me or, or what should happen? And uh, they, they read out the charge that I was reported by the staff as having been, as having seen dancing, singing the good ship lollipop and wearing a lady's hat and a handbag. And, uh, and they said, what have you got to say for yourself? And I said, well, the hat and the handbag didn't match. <laughs> well, the committee broke up with yeah. laughter. And, and case dismissed. Case dismissed. Case dismissed. <laughs> uh, well, we, we're talking about funny times, and they were funny times, and yeah. still are, but the Delphine story in, in Hobart, I mean... Uh, that's a story in itself. That's a story in itself, yeah. yeah. Where, uh, uh, you, you carried a, what the, everyone thought was a, a model in, and the model turned to uh, yeah, life. Well, I mean. well, do you want the story? Well, yeah, why not? We could, we uh, could put the story together, yeah. What happened? Mid-60s, early 60s, was it? I can't remember exactly, yeah. 64 or yeah. 63, or I can't remember. No, it wasn't 63, because that was the year that... that uh, um, oh, Freya, Freya, Freya won it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. First year she won, mm -hmm. I think, wasn't Correct. it? Yep. No, I can't, can't remember yeah. the year, but anyway, yeah, we were in all, all on Hobart, and Curly Bryden was a very funny man. And uh, as I said, he was the boss of the Mirror at the time, and and uh, he said, Come on, Megawara, we're going up town to buy all the water pistols. I said, What are we going to do that for? Curly said, We've got to buy all the water pistols from Hobart. And we can shoot everyone, and no one can shoot us back because they won't be able to buy any. So we set off to go and buy <laughs> captive the market in water pistols. And anyway, we got the tower, and I spotted. I looked over and saw a Delphine's frock shop with a window display model. I said, "No, we're not here to buy water pistols, Curl. We we want to that, see that window display model. We want that for Del for uh, Rawmick because he can't win a lady in home, but he can't get a girl." So, uh, oh, he said, that's a good idea. So we go in and approach the shop owner, and she said, oh, no, she said, I can't sell it to you. She said, uh, but I've got one at the back with a slightly damaged eye. Uh, how about that? And she wanted 40 pounds for it. Anyway, we, <laughs> we must have been pretty flush with money in those days, so we, we bought it. And then after we bought it, she sold us a dress, and a wig, uh, she capitalised very nicely. And uh, anyway, we called her Delphine and we dressed her all up and put the wig on. And, and Curly said, just a minute, and he rushed next door and bought, at the chemist shop and he bought a pair of sunglasses. And he came back and he covered up the dowry. Oh, and she didn't want to sell it to us after that. She wanted to use it herself. Anyway, but we convinced her that we should have it. And uh, 
and she was really a lifelike. And anyway, Curly and I, we had to get a taxi. We couldn't bend it. We had <laughs> partly hanging out the window. Anyway, we went back to Dolan's Hotel, where it was our famous watering hole in those days. And uh, Curly and I had Delphine standing in a passageway having a beer with her. And the boys would stick their head out the window. Look, oh, look at that good source at Middleborough and Brighton have got. <laughs> anyway, they, anyway, they get. Uh, it was become a joke. It was, uh, um, it was. I learned this joke. I learned this fun. And uh, oh, the tree house was in it, and uh, um, um, Bond's man. What was his name? Uh, um, Russell Slade. Russell Slade was there, and Slade insisted that she had should have Bond's. Underwear. underwear, so we sent him a runner up to Woolworths and buy half a dozen pairs of pair of Bond's, Bond's pants, you know, yeah. for and she, it was a big joke. And anyway, so we eventually tied her to the mast of Lena and left her standing there for all the people in Hobart to see it. And uh, we spread the word that that was Eileen's joke and shouldn't, no one should touch it. But that didn't suit Peter Water and his, his crew of of um, uh, Asper. Ada, of, uh, Asper. Asper. Mm. And uh, we were going down to Dover, sailing to Dover, and so they shanghai her. <laughs> and uh, we uh, got very surprised about it, and we heard she'd gone to Dover. So we set up a recovery mission and we um, went to. to uh, <laughs> And Fitzgerald, you know, Fitzgerald stores in Hobart, like, like Myers, and so. Anyway, we uh, we commandeered one of their vans, and we, we we could lay her down, and we had a, two or three cars, and we all set off to Dover to get her back. And we called in the pubs on the little pubs on the way down, and we'd order a hundred beers at each pub, and it threw the threw the spatter in the works in a few places. And anyway, uh, we eventually got Delphine back. And asked her, uh, Peter Warner was up at the pub, and uh, he had a crew of naval cadets, and they were all sitting there wearing their navy hats and so on. So we took Delphine back, and we took uh, the navy hats, and uh, so we all wore navy hats from then on. <laughs> and uh, so we went back to uh, uh, Hobart, and. Uh, Oh, Peter Warner rang the police, and the police had a roadblock for us, so we dodged them on the way back to Hobart. And uh, anyway, we, we had the offhand back on our ladder, and we were all sitting down the saloon, in the saloon and having a drink, and uh, and the police all came, and we were looking for men. We still had the Navy hats on, so we were looking for people who have got some Navy hats, and, and have, so we've also got the ensign of the naval ensign of Astor. And uh, we're looking for a navy flag, and we're looking for a, 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 a yes, navy hats. Well, not we haven't got, we haven't seen any of those. And, you know, we we're all wearing them. The police took it in good part, and they had a few drinks, and that was it. So we, anyway, we then discretion became the better part of Alan. We decided to have a recapitulation with Peter Warner, and we would present him with Delphine at the prize giving in the city hall and he would hand back we would hand hand back the naval ensign and the hats and he would hand back hand Delphine back to us and anyway we carried Delphine up through the streets and Hobart and into the city hall and, and we took her in and put her on top of the grand piano up on the stage and uh, Merv Davey was a bit angry us in those days because he was the manager of the CYC and we were his bad boys. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he rushed up on the stage and he poked Delphine in the boob and he said, Get this thing off here. And Delphine sat up and said, Get your hands off me. And he nearly fell out. So I went in and fell out around backwards. <laughs> and and uh, because we'd switched her for a live girl. <laughs> <laughs> put, put this very distinctive green dress that she owned and wig and sunglasses and the whole lot. She, and held her, she held herself stiff as we carried her up to the streets. 
she was a, a, a girlfriend from Melbourne of, of Curly Bright, Dottie Sawyer was her name. And uh, anyway, yeah. And anyway, the, 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 the governor of Hobart's wife nearly fell off the chair laughing, and it was all in good fun, we thought. But it got out of hand, and, and uh, anyway, they, uh, they decided they better do something about it, and they barred us. The uh, CY, the Royal Dock Club of Tasmania, wrote a letter to the CYC requesting that. that they refuse any any yacht in any future Hobart race that carries any member of this year's crew of Eileena. So in effect, we were barred from Hobart racing for life. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, uh, we decided uh, discretion was the better part of valor, and we wrote a letter to just admitting liability, admitting you know liability and. And so on, and so the CYC and their wisdom decided to give us three months suspension in, in lieu of being barred forever. <laughs> and uh, so we we had we got the three months suspension, and we used to go over the road to the pub, buy grog, and, and each day at five o'clock we'd have a procession on Southerly, and it was open to, to anyone on the marina, on the marina, <laughs> and no one was going to the CYC. They were all coming to Southerly. Anyway, when the when the three months was up, they uh, gave us a welcome back party at the CYC <laughs> because they couldn't they, they weren't doing any business. This is a huge doubt too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that that's roughly the story. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Now, just getting back to the sailing, I mean, you've seen the evolution of yachts from the fifties through to now. What, what do you what do you what would you rate as probably the, the best ocean racing boat in that time? I mean, would it be a Freya or a Ballyhoo? Or, I mean, it's a hard question, I know, because yeah, of, the, of, the, of the progression of yachts. But I think, I think the Sparkler and Stevens boats were probably the best mm. in their day. Uh, those rag them up in love and war and those, that type of boat. Mm. Uh, they're heavy displacement boats, but they were substantial and you'd go to sea in all conditions and and fare, fare very well. Mm. But uh, the, the lightweight boats crept in and and admittedly they're a bit faster, not a lot, mm. but uh, they're a bit faster and uh, and I don't know, they took over. Yeah. But it, it wasn't, it wasn't, it, I think, Oh, they, they, then they let people sit on the rail. If initially, you, you weren't allowed to have any part of your body sticking out the side of the boat and so on. And that was a bit of a decline in ocean racing because people didn't want to go and sit on the rail for a whole race. And uh, uh, it, it was a big decline in ocean racing uh, because of that rule as much as anything. Uh, some of my best fun was sailing in Ballyhoo. We we got first to finish in the Hobart race. We got first to finish in the Bermuda race. First to finish in the China Sea race. First to finish in the Round Away race, uh, in which we broke the record as well. Uh, and we had a, some wonderful trips all over the world. And uh, so that was a, an excellent period in life. And uh, I still had on Southerly while this was all on. And uh, I don't know, that's about, about yeah. it uh, for that, is it? Yeah, well, yeah, I, I just think, you know, the, the, the characters, I mean, the, I think the sport has lost the characters today. I think the sport's changed quite yeah, dramatically. Yeah. The, the fun, well, a lot of the fun's gone out of it. For instance, you go to Hobart and We'd get there five days in five days in Southerly, mm. and but there'd still be a, half the competitors all still there, and, and and had some wonderful parties, and I mean mm. <laughs> really good parties, mm. Mm. and uh, and the first or the last boat was still there, mm. uh, but nowadays they go down and there's semi-professionals and they jump off the boat and go home straight away. Mm. 
the boats, half the boats come straight back, the bigger boats that get there quicker, mm. and uh, the, the camaraderie is not, mm. is not there the same as it was. Mm. All right, Donald, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Okay. A pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Now, I, no, I should throw in, you were manager, general manager of the club at the time when, <laughs> when I was in, the hat and the handbag didn't match. I was, I was. <laughs> I fell off the chair as well with my <laughs>